Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy, and it's a babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge. Today, we're going to be talking about the changes in patch 9.1. And thank the Lord, they finally killed Glog. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm kind of overreacting a little bit, but they did make some changes to Clog. They've added a new card that is not yet available, but uh, we will be able to play around with that in a uh, few days. Um, or if you're very lucky, you can get it from Kegs already. But before I start getting ahead of myself, let's head into the deck builder so we can check out all these new changes one by one. And actually, let's start with Nilfgaard, the one that I was just talking about. Coated weapons has been changed. So instead of you being able to destroy, well, send a copy of the unit that you destroy with the five damage from this card to the top of your opponent's deck, any of them, you can't target tokens anymore. So finally, that means that cloggers will not be able to put an Erika's drone or a wandering tree ant or a, um, 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 any of the other swarming units basically um, on top of your deck. So you have always at least a four provision card at the top of your deck. The only exception to this rule is still the guardian that Cynthia spawns on top of your deck. That's probably the most useless card that you can get. But other than that, you'll get at least a four provision card. They can still clog up your deck as much as they want, but it will no longer be with useless tokens, which is at least a good change. So this change also works on the uh, Viper Witcher. Where is he? Here. The Viper Witcher himself. So the bleeding can still be applied. He also still triggers at the trend and six, but he can't target tokens anymore, which is really, really good. Nilfgaard has actually been hit with quite a few nerfs because the Blightmaker has also received the nerf that we all expected. I think the uh, Blightmaker now has been bumped up to six provisions. Still has the same effect, so you can still get 11 points out of this card if you combine him with the Mage Assassin. But uh, yeah, he uh, got the well-deserved provision nerf. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, there's a lot of cards that factor into uh, thinning your own deck in Nilfgaard that have gotten a provision buff. So, for example, Albridge went from 7 to 6. Uh, Afan over here went from 8 to 7. So, again, a free 5 point that if you can uh, put him on top of your deck, which is what thinning decks like to do. And even the Imperial Golem got uh, a power buff and a provision buff. So, he went from 11 to 12 power and from seven to six provisions. So again, very powerful card now at six provisions. If you manage to put, for example, a spying unit on top of your opponent's deck of one power, you can uh, put down the Imperial Golem for 11 points for six uh, provisions, which basically makes it as strong as the Blightmaker, aside from, of course, the Blightmaker giving you an extra bit of tinning as well. And I was gonna say that's it for Nilfgaard, but that's not it at all, because Nilfgaard got hit with two provision uh, debuffs, so provision nerfs, on their leader abilities. So if you go to leader abilities, both imprisonment went from 16 to 15 and um, double cross went from 17 to 16. So there is no 17 uh, provision bonus leader ability anymore in Nilfgaard, which I think was the last one that had actually 17 extra points if I recall correctly. Yeah, so as I thought, there was there is no older uh, ability anymore with 17 extra points in the leader ability. And while we're talking about leader abilities, of course, there also has been a very slight nerf to the Syndicate leader abilities. So uh, both Jackpot with its new passive ability and Pirate's Cove has, uh, have been nerfed by one extra provision. So Jackpot went from 16 to 15 and Pirate's Cove from 15 to 14, making Jackpot still higher in provision bonuses than Pirate's Cove, which is not something I agree with. But yeah, that's a bit of a weird decision that they used. Well, check those two leader abilities down a provision. Well, Jackpot should have even gone one further. I think the provision bonuses should have been swapped. So uh, Jackpot at 14 and Pirates Cove at 15. But yeah, it is what it is right now. But you can expect a lot more uh, Jackpot on the ladder in the coming weeks. Another leader ability that got a provision nerf was Pincer Maneuver. So Pincer Maneuver went from 16 to 15. Again, it's uh, only four points, but it gives you a lot of consistency. I showed that off with the Spellfire deck uh, from last month. And there, if you watch the open, you see there's a lot of Northern Realms uh, decks that are 
very powerful just with the consistency that Pincer Maneuver gives you. Um, a provision buff was actually given to the Rage of the Sea ability, so it went back to 15 as it was before, so from 14 to 15. Nothing really has changed on the ability otherwise. And then the final leader ability I wanted to talk about is one that actually has changed, is White Frost. So the Deadly Chills deck that I made a few weeks ago is now even more powerful because the White Frost ability got a passive that whenever you play a Wild Hunt unit boosted by one if there is Frost on the opposing row. So it needs to be on the straight opposite row. It doesn't mean that it triggers regardless of whether you have Frost on the row or not. Uh, or on the other side of the field. It needs to be on the opposite row of where you put your wild hunt unit. But this could potentially be another like 10 to, yeah, realistically around 10 extra points in a passive ability. So very, very powerful indeed. Uh, especially with Oberon, because this basically is an indirect buff to Ober Oberon, because Oberon will trigger this ability twice. So with Oberon himself and then the wild hunt unit that you play with his ability. So very very powerful indeed which gives me a good segue to go into the monster changes so monsters mostly provision changes the most important ones are directly tied to the white frost ability so art gate has gone uh, from nine provisions to eight same with the uh, red riders uh, went from uh, six to five so both of the frost applying abilities are now well special cards are now uh, easier to use in your deck. The Ice Giant also got a uh, provision buff and the Griffin got a power buff. And But I think the most important one, there were a few other uh, provision buffs, but the most important one that has actually got a nerf is the Witch Apprentice. So the easy mode beast, so to speak, uh, the one that gives you uh, two points at the end of every turn if you have Sabbath, so 25 points in a single row, has been nerfed from four provisions to five uh, just because it was that powerful. So uh, right now it's still usable, but you'll need to use uh, lose two more provisions if you want to put this in your deck. Another interesting thing with the new um, White Frost ability, the passive ability, is that the Nagalfar's crew now will immediately boost itself to two and then to three with the new leader ability because uh, of the way that the game logic actually works as the Legion actually explained on the stream, on the developer stream, is because the Nagalfar's crew spawns Frost first and then the passive of the leader ability is checked Nagel Farscrew will always be boosted by your leader ability if you use White Frost. That's it for monsters, so we might as well go further along the list to Skellige. Again, not a lot has changed for Skellige, mostly provision changes. Uh, most importantly, the Raging Bear and the Demon Pirate have both been boosted to 8. Um, which means that they now basically are at the same level as the Bear Witcher. So they basically are trying to negate the power creep that we've seen with the newer cards. Uh, the Triosark Veteran also has an increase in his Berserk ability. So instead of triggering on Berserk 2, he triggers at Berserk 3, making him a little bit more viable in your decks. And then I think the coolest ability change is on the boat builders here. Because now the boat builders will allow you to apply armor to a unit every single turn. So the order ability received a cooldown allowing you to, well, provide one of your ships with a uh, piece of, well, allied unit regardless, with a piece of armor every single turn. For Northern Realms, again, the changes are pretty limited. This patch has been relatively small. I think the most important one is over here. So the War Chariot now also has a cooldown. So you can use the order ability, both order abilities at least, uh, every three turns now, a cooldown of three. So basically allowing you to bleed the unit for four turns and change it to the other row, which is uh, possibly very powerful. Uh, this might see a bit more use now. Um, because of the cooldown, but it's probably not strong enough compared to some of the other cards to be used. And then of course, another very important nerf kinda is Reinforced Ballista. Um, everything basically stayed the same, aside from the power was reduced from four to three, but he gained they gained uh, a single armor point in return. So you still need the same amount of damage to take it out, but uh, the Reinforced Ballista itself is worth one point less on the board. So that is the only change that basically does. Um, Squire Tell, sadly, there's not really anything to talk about. There, there's been a few uh, provision changes like the Cat Witcher Saboteur uh, and the Force Whisperer got Vitality on a ranged ability. But that's basically it. Aside from, as, as I said, the Half-Off Hunter also a provision buff, but 
it's really really limited for what is right now the weakest faction in the game so uh, that's a bit sad but nothing we can do about that uh, Nilfgaard we talked about and then Syndicate got a few nerfs on select cards so Horson Jr has his power reduced so from five to four that's basically the only thing they changed so again one point difference uh, I don't think that's going to make that much of a difference with this card um, it's it's still a very strong card giving you 10 points guaranteed on your 10 provisions and then even more so if you manage to destroy those three power units with his fee ability allowing you to still clear the board of whatever you want to clear it with uh, and aside from that there were a lot of other provision changes but a few bronze provision changes and the only ability that actually changed was Adriana Domingue who uh, gained an extra passive basically where he increases the profits um, by one his profit starts at two but his profit is increased by one for each sly seductress you already have on the field so basically giving him a bit more synergy with sly seductresses um, but other than that nothing has really changed you can still pay five uh, coins for him to spawn another sly seductress so that's it basically for syndicates and then we have the neutral cards again a lot of provision changes i'm not going to highlight every single one of them the most impactful ones might actually be the uh thinning sorceresses over here so yennefer divination allowing you to reveal a random unit from your deck and boost an allied unit by its power and the same but in damage for triss uh went down from nine to eight provisions um don't really know why they did that they i mean they don't seem like cards that should be power crap because it could be quite a bit because um, usually this is used in combination with uh, Tibor Egbrock which gives you 13 boost or 13 damage so I don't see why this had to be buffed but yeah nevertheless the most important change in the neutral category is the new card that I talked about at the beginning of this video um, it's not yet available for crafting um, I tried to get it by opening like a bunch of kegs uh, it is right over here so it basically uses the art of the original journey uh, and it is the sunset wonder so Geralt and Dandelion on a journey uh, with a very very cool effect actually so he starts at one power for 11 provisions but this card automatically starts in your hand which is a really cool effect to start with and it always starts at the leftmost position in your hand and at the beginning of your turn while it is in your hand it will move from left to right so it will skip one of the cards and switch positions with the one on the right and then move all the way through your hands through the course of the match um, whenever it does that, whenever it moves to the right, it will boost itself by one, so no strengthening, it will just boost itself. And uh, at the end of your turn, if you haven't passed and there are no cards on the right of this card, so it's at the very right position in your hand, he will summon himself from your hand to a random row and then you draw an extra card. So basically this is thinning. But thinning that kind of forces you, if you want to keep this card as long as possible in your hand, you're basically forced to always use the leftmost card in your hand, which is not ideal. Um, but still, this could, in theory, be up to, I think it's 8 points, right? Because otherwise, at the end, it will not jump out of your hand. Uh, or give you an extra card so but very interesting card to play around with right now we can't do that just yet so as you can see i can only mill it i can't create this card you can craft this card either it is possible if you're very lucky i've seen a few people being this lucky i've opened 300 kegs to try and get this card but i didn't get it uh, if you're really lucky you can get it out of kegs why are they doing this well um this weekend uh witcher con starts and you can actually get this card during the stream for free um, once WitcherCon has completed, you can, will be able to craft this card as well. So this card will just join the rest of the card pool in about a week. Um, but other than that, you should definitely check out WitcherCon where you will get the opportunity to get this card for free. Um, which kind of makes me an idiot as I try to uh, open like 300 kegs to get this. As you can see by the, uh, the limited amount of meteorite powder I still have left. Um, yeah. Um, that, 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 that's just me. Uh, but yeah, that's the new card that will be introduced um, to everybody by the end of the week. So aside from that, there were a few uh, bug fixes as well. Nothing too notable aside from that man's tongue, which was bugged before this patch. And that it showed the owner of this card when they played this card, the correct order of their deck right at that point. Which is of course way too powerful uh, for them to be able to do this. 
Um, so they just fixed that, that it just shows you the deck in a random order. Um, but yeah, otherwise they didn't really change this card. It just, uh, it just was fixed. Um, and that's it already for this uh, patch overview and the new card, of course, the Sunset Wonders is probably the biggest addition to this uh, patch. But other than that, it doesn't seem like this will shake up the meta too much. Um, let me know what you think of these new changes. I think there's a few, honestly, there's a few changes that they could have made and they didn't. Uh, specifically for Syndicate, I think we've seen a lot of Syndicate uh, in play lately uh, with... A reaction to that was always to use Imprisonment. I've seen a lot of people play Nilfgaard just to counter something like Jackpot immediately. Um, and I feel like this is going to be a repeat of that this season. The change to White Frost isn't going to make that much of a difference. And the, uh, the, the nerfs to the leader abilities aren't going to change anything either, I think. Just that one point of provision is just going to force everybody to swap out a 5 provision for a 4 provision and then they're good to go to continue their, on their merry way. So this is not going to change too much, but I guess we'll see where we'll stand in about a month. Let me know what you think about these changes. Is it enough for you? Will you be excited to head into this new season or is it just a bit of a bummer? Just uh, let me know in the comment section down below so we can discuss this further. And with that said, I'd like to thank you all enormously for watching and uh, look out for the upcoming deck guides because I have a few fancy ideas that I haven't been able to do in the previous season and since nothing really changed, I might as well use them now. So thank you guys again enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next episode of Gwantage. Goodbye and stay nutty.